Get Hot is presented by Botano. The game starts now. Here are your hosts, Brent Wallace, Jason York, and Bobby Ryan. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Coming In Hot, brought to you by Botano.ca. I'm Brent Wallace, alongside Jason York uh, in the beautiful South, and Bobby Ryan, of course. Uh, boys, how's it going? By the way, Yorkie, how is day two of the trip? Oh, day two was just as good as uh, day one. Uh, same one. It's, it's just like it's like Groundhog Day here, man. It's just every day is beautiful. Take a look again. Here's the backdrop over there. Crazy. No, we don't Crazy. care, Yorkie. I, don't... I didn't mean to ask that question. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't belong here, Wally. I don't belong here. 20 centimeters of snow coming on Thursday. So, uh, yeah, oh, I don't boy. care where you are at the moment. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we'll uh, we'll move on. Lots to talk about. Obviously, the news breaking yep. uh, yesterday that Josh Norris out for the season with a shoulder surgery now planned. Um, we've spoken to Josh. We know him pretty well. Uh this obviously is disappointing for Josh. There's no question. And uh, Bobby, I'm going to start with you because I know you two are tight. Like, boy, you got a feel for the guy who really said, you know what? I don't want to do the surgery because I want to try and come back. And it's and I'm yep. like, it's tough on you mentally to sit out 38 games. Uh, have you by chance spoken to him? No, you know, I was going to reach out yesterday, but I figured he was probably, um, I just figured he's probably hearing from a lot of people for one and then doesn't want to hear from somebody that's somewhat of a media guy too now. So I, I let it go. I, figured <laughs> I, would reach out for a week. Um, I just, I, same boat. I feel for him because he's, you know, he obviously grinded pretty hard to get back to this and the three games in it kind of, you know, reappears and it tells you that you have to do exactly what you were supposed to do, but elected not to, to, to fix the issue. That's a shame. So uh, I let him be. But um, yeah, you certainly feel for the player in the organization right now because that's, you know, that's. I don't know if you've putting a dagger in your season yet already, but that, that's certainly a for me. Yeah, it's it's a huge gut punch. It's a huge gut punch, and I, I I totally understand what what Josh was trying to do. The, the guy's a battler. He wanted to get back. He wanted to play. Um, that's I don't know Josh obviously like Bobby does, but just from how watching him and how he goes about his business um yeah it's it's brutal it's brutal i know a lot of people are talking about it but it's the end of the day it's you always want to try and avoid surgery you, you do and you and yeah. you want to try and rehab it unfortunately you hurt it again and uh hopefully it gets it gets fixed and he he uh well it will get fixed it'll get fixed he'll rehab it this summer he'll have lots of time he'll be back and be playing next year uh, the interesting thing, there's an article today in, by Ian Mendez in The Athletic, as always. Uh, very good, very well thought out. And he's got a quote from Shane Pinto in it. Of course, we all know Shane Pinto tried the exact same thing. He came back and then was done for the missed 68 games afterwards. Uh, he just said, quote, we're competitors and we want to get back out there as soon as we can. I think you got to try the rehab part of it first. That's what I did and that's what he did. Unfortunately, it didn't work out, but I think you have to try it. I just... I wouldn't just quit on it. And that's why he's like, why we elected not to have surgery. I get it, guys. Um, but these are multi-million dollar investments. These are assets to the organization. I, and, and you two have played, and you and they've, they've changed since you've played Yorkie, where I think the player gets a lot more say in what he wants to do. But if you're coming back in the lineup and you can't take draws, should you really be in the lineup? Because you're clearly not 100%. Well, I don't know. Well, should should Zub be playing with a full mask on after a broken jaw? Well, he's not a hundred percent. It's it's you, it, you always ask the question this, and I went through this with because I had a shoulder injury in Anaheim back when I was playing. I was an important player on the team, and I came back early and, and I played with it, uh, and I played with it some more. It, it wasn't a, a dislocation; it was a torn labrum. It uh, and it turned a lot worse, but they always it still hasn't changed. That they're always going to go to the player and ask how the player is feeling. And, and then you got to assess, can I hurt this anymore? Um, what, what's going to be the worst case scenario? Well, the, the worst case scenario for Josh Norris was he was always going to miss the season. If, if, if he had surgery, he was going to have surgery and be done for the year. So then the question is, okay, can I come back and try it? And they'll say, yeah, you can try it, but there's no guarantee. Let's see how the rehab goes. It always goes that way. They always, you always want to rehab something because surgery, everybody thinks surgery is this magic potion, but it's not. 
and and uh, shoulders are really tricky as well. So um, I totally understand what happened. I've been there. I've done that. Um, and, and I've come back from injury at, at even stupider things than this. I came back from a, a knee injury after 11 days of surgery. 11 days. I was supposed to be out six weeks. Wow. I came back too early. Guess what? I re-injured my knee. And guess what? I re-injured it again two months later. And guess what? Uh, they took me out back and shot me because I had to retire after that. The career was over. It's just, we are hockey players. We are wired to get back. We hate being alone. We hate being away from the team. It's we. It's just, when you are injured, it's awful. And especially when you're a young guy, especially when you're super yeah. important, especially if the team is losing, you try and get back and get back into it with the boys in. This is what happens. So I, I don't blame Josh. Um, I'm not pointing fingers on anybody. It's just, it's unfortunate, but I totally understand it. Yeah, and just, yeah, I'll, I'll agree. I mean, I agree with absolutely everything you said, but the, the, the one part I, that I never liked about the process of injury and trying to, like, I, I agree, you avoid, you avoid the knife at all costs, right? That's That was one of the things that you mm -hmm. say all the time. If there's any, any sliver of a chance that you don't have to do that, don't. So I don't blame the player. I don't blame, I, I was with Jared and those guys for years. I don't blame anybody in this situation. They all came to the conclusion that they could probably try it this way and it just didn't work out. And fortunately, you lose a year out of it. And now he's behind in recovery from where he would have started. But it's very, very hard on a player of Josh's caliber to be told, you yeah. know, what do you want to do or ask what you want to do because he's going to lie <laughs> no matter what. Exactly. Right? We all, yes. We all are. Um, so that it's a really tough spot for a young player to be in, and I hope that he takes something out of it at least. That would be my only thing is if he could take something out of this and said next time I'll be a little more of an advocate for myself early on, and then go from there. So what I, I well, did just speak, to add, uh, just to add on to what Bobby yeah, said. Yeah, go ahead, Yorkie. Now that I'm like older and I'm retired and I know how I feel, if I could go back in a little time machine, I probably wouldn't have played injured when I shouldn't have been doing it. Uh, because it doesn't, you're taking a big risk and, and, and your body's your body. And when you're older, it's, uh, it's not a fun place to be. And fair enough. In fact, there are days I don't want to get out of bed, but I, I didn't have surgery. I, I'm just old. Um, the, I did speak <laughs> last night to, uh, a former NHL executive about it because there's been stuff on Twitter of how could the Sens allow this to happen back to back with Shane Pinto and with. Josh Norris and how this all came about and should they not be better and it's not on them and and people would like to try and pin this on Pierre Dorian or on DJ and saying they want to get back in to try and save their jobs or do whatever but the reality is you and you guys know as you brought it up Jerry Town and, and Doc Chow they do everything by the book as this medical staff does they you you can't get around them and they won't let you play no. if there's any chance but the player at the end of the day has the final say, and that's what happened here. And too bad because, I, I and I guess it. There's no good way around it, Yorkie, as you say. It's either you try and get rehab and play through it, or you shut it down right away. So, I commend Josh for trying to go through this because, as we heard from him in our show, he wasn't having a lot of fun being out of the lineup for 38 games. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, all right. So we move on to now his replacement. Uh, to Ridley Gregg, 20 years old. Uh, he is a uh, 28th overall pick in 2020 by the Ottawa Senators. Uh, good numbers in Belleville this year, 28 games, 12 goals, 23 points, six foot, 180 pounds, not overly big. He did have a really good world junior uh, in that summer one. He got ultimately hurt and couldn't play in the gold medal game, but he, I think he was player of the game two of the four games he was in. Um, and just for facts and figures if he does play on Wednesday which it looks like he's scheduled to he'll be the fifth player from the 2020 draft by Ottawa uh to make their NHL debut so guys right now he's scheduled to play between Alex Dabrinkit and Claude Giroux that's a pretty good start <laughs> for a 20 year old on the second line I don't know that that's the right place for him to be but Bobby um you gotta like where they're putting him I guess to give him a chance to succeed yeah, I, I don't have a problem with it. It's, it's elevated a little bit more than he would, um, that, that a lot of people are probably comfortable with. Not him. He's like, if I'm going, let's go, right? I'm, I'm sure he's feeling yep. um, anxious today, and, and but excited at the same time. If you're going to come in and you're going to be an offensive player in the league or you're going to be a player that um, 
can play in a third line spot more so, but provide some offense and, and you're getting a chance to go in like this. The second level has got to be off the charts for him uh, today. So I just don't know who else you elevate above him. So I have no, I have no issue with it. Go, you know, right into the fire, man. Good luck. Um, and, <laughs> you know, again, he's got some good numbers down in the American league. So there's a, you know, there is, there's a chance he can do that at this level, but if you're going to, you're not going to, you're not going to put up points with anybody other than these top six guys. So go ahead and, and you know, have a night. Yeah, and I, I can see what, uh, what DJ is trying to do. When he talked the other day, it was a couple days ago, he said he wants a worker on every line. So one thing when Greg gets into the lineup here, he's going to work hard. That, that's his MO. He's a hardworking guy. He's a buzzsaw. It's going to provide some energy. There's more than enough skill on that line with Dabrinkit and Giroux. So not that Greg's not skilled, but I, I can see what – they're trying to get three lines that can score. So you got Batherson with Pinto. You know Kachuk and Stitzel have some has some experience and so together. And Joseph's going to be the worker on that line. So uh, this is to me, it's more like I think it's it's DJ. Maybe this might be the first time I've seen somebody put down in the lineup. So a little bit of a message being sent here, I think, to Batherson. He's now, I would say, out of the top six. Let's say, all right, we're, we got to. Because you got to change some things, you got to, you got to send some messages, and not to say, point the finger at Drake and say he's been the worst player on this team. But I, I can tell what the coach is trying to do here. He's trying to mix things yeah. up, put a worker on each line, and and for Greg, just got to go out and play simple. Go out, get the puck. He's going to be the guy that's first in on the four check and first on the back check, and those guys will love yeah, yeah. that. <laughs> that's the, uh, that's one of those ones that you know. Drew's looking at the lineup tonight going, yep, that kid's working both corners. <laughs> I'll be in the spot. <laughs> there's, a, there's a guy. I don't know if you remember Steve Ruchin, Bobby. Uh, oh, I yeah. never played with Ruchin. Steve Ruchin, no. when, he, when he played with Korea and Solani, he was first guy in and first guy back. <laughs> <laughs> if you talk to Tamo about Ruchin, man, he's got so many good things to say about him. That guy had the sorest back after every night. He worked so hard out there. Talk about under he, – he is one of the most underrated players, I think, of, uh, of that era. He did a lot of work out there. Great player. Well, uh, Ridley Gregg did say that Claude Giroux, uh, he grew up idolizing, if you will, or he's one of his favorite yeah. players. So my guess is if Claude Giroux says, uh, Ridley, you're the first guy in and the last guy out, he'd be like, absolutely. Whatever you want, gotcha. sir. <laughs> yes, I'll have another. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can I get you anything? Can I bring you coffee? Um, yeah, yeah. So – now the expectations, unfortunately, well, I don't know if "unfortunately" is the the word, but are they they're going to be pretty high on Ridley Gray? Can we temper these a little? Do you think? Because I'm not sure in his first game he's going to be lighting it up, but that's what fans would like to see, obviously. Yeah, Bobby? I think uh, I think Bobby's Bobby's frozen. I got this one here. Why? I I, oh. I actually think. A lot of times in your first game like this, Wally, he's going to go out there and be energized. I say he's good for – am I going to put an yeah. over-under on this? He's getting at least one point in this game. He's getting – he'll probably get an assist or I might even get two points. Oh. You're, you're playing with two world – you're playing with two world-class offensive guys. And it's amazing if you keep it simple. Listen, I, I think I told you this before. I once was a defenseman. I once was a defenseman, but I was put up to play with a guy named Sergei. I was put up to play on a line with Sergei Fedorov, and all I did was go to the net and put my stick on the ice, and he knocked it in me into the net. So, hey, if I can do it, a guy like Rid Ridley Gregg can do it too. It's uh, it's not rocket science. Just go to the net, put your stick on the ice. Well, let's hope well, apologize, uh, his boy, NHL yeah. debut. Yeah. That's okay. I'm back. I'm back. I don't know. What, hey, I, Bobby, I was we have to hear. And then I all of a sudden I came back in and we were wrapping up that conversation. So uh, I'm sure it was a hell of a story. <laughs> nah, it, wasn't, it, wasn't that good. it was really good. I've, I've <laughs> um, just on Ridley Gregg, I hope his NHL debut goes obviously better than his uh, preseason debut for the Sens when he ended up being suspended for a hit. So uh, it's funny because he couldn't play his first NHL game. He had to sit out a game, if you will, in order to play to make his uh, NHL debut. I don't know how you word that properly. But anyway, uh, we're moving on. Uh, Nikita Zaitsev, by the way, looks like he's going to be back in the lineup, uh, pairing on the third line with – or third pairing with Eric Brandstrom. As they sent JBD down – I don't know. Sure. 
Um, I I don't know if I agree with it, but it doesn't really matter. I I I just I would like to see JBD play, and I think we discussed that yesterday. Like, let him play, yeah. uh, and see what you got. But I guess if you've got four and a half million dollars in Nikita Zaitsev and you want to move him, you better let people see that he can play. Yeah. Um, one thing I want to get to before we yeah. get to uh, your pick of the lock of the day. So yesterday at the end of practice, and Bobby, you can maybe talk a bit more about this. Uh, Alex DeBrinket and Claude Giroux spoke for like 12 to 13 minutes, according to uh, Ian Mendez, for after practice at the whiteboard. Um, and I think afterwards they said it was on basically how to generate more offense and moving the puck and whatnot. Um, interesting, because you guys know 12 to 13 minutes after a practice is a really long time to be on the ice uh, having a conversation with a coach. Uh, is this a little overdue? Are we surprised it's taken to January, the nearly the end of January, to get to? No, I, I, and I think, I think the fact that they did it is being overblown too. Listen, co the coaches are coming to players now at this point, saying, "Why aren't we scoring five on five? We've had our answers. You guys probably have your opinions. Let's put them down on on a whiteboard and and air them out, um, and see if there's, you know, see if there's a." divide between what you think and what we think or if we're in you know if we're on the same page so i'm sure they sat there they went over some plays they went over some logistical things that they're bothering you know two of your better scorers i'm sure um in those two and let's let's just find some middle ground here and see what we can agree on to take forward to the rest of the team these are two veteran guys these are two guys that have been around the league a little bit that have scored at every level so i don't think it's anything more than that they probably just got down the you know down the conversational rabbit hole looking at those things that decided it, it you know it took a little longer than the maybe five minutes dj was planning but that i don't think there's anything there it doesn't if they're if they're not yelling at each other then you're just having a conversation <laughs> and i don't think i don't see anything wrong with that at all i always I always appreciate it coaches coming to you um and saying listen here's what i think tell me what you think let's figure it out it's the way the game. It's the way the. It's the way the game is now. And if and if you're a, if you're a smart coach, you you have to empower your players. You have to let your players think that they're in it with you. And and I a lot of people are on DJ. He's taking a lot of heat. It's it's uh, it's well known what's going on in the city. But I, I will say this: you you can tell the players still want to play for DJ. They still play hard. And, and there's nothing to it. It's it's two it's two guys that have been in the league, have had success. They're going to the coach, and they're talking about something after practice. I think it's it's a good thing. <laughs> it's a good yeah. thing. Hey, yeah. Things aren't going well. What's a smart thing to do? Hey, let's ask two of my better players of maybe some suggestions. And and it's 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 just an open dialogue. It's uh it's it's a very good thing, and it happens all the time. It usually happens inside the dressing room, but hey, let's yeah. well, do this right now. And that's um, the point. So, but, Mike, from our point of view, though when we're sitting in the stands watching this happen is as DJ's message of whatever he's trying or the coaching staff's message of whatever their system is. And we've talked about this ad nauseum. Is it not being listened to anymore? Is it now them going and going DJ guys? No, we need to start doing this. This is what we need to do. No, am I wrong? No. Listen, I, I if, if you, I don't, feel that way. I don't see that at all. You're, you can weigh in more. I don't see that. I think the guys listen to him. They want to play for him. But there's probably some things that they're thinking. It's just not working five on five. And we got more and we can hear some ideas. I don't. I really don't think that's much more than that. You can tell with, with, with players when your coach is with you or he's above you and he's trying to save his own back. I don't think DJ cares about any of the noise that's going on around the team. No. He's just... He like everybody thinks like, he's not one of those guys that goes home and is reading social media. He's just trying to figure out in his own way how to figure this out. And hey, if I'm coaching that team and Debrinket and Giroux come to me, I'm gonna listen. You're stupid if yeah. you're not. And uh, and 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 that's like I said, that's the way it is right now. And all coaches have to be like that because at the end of the day. The players now have the most power. Guys are making too much money, and you, if you upset, it's the old thing in hockey, hey, eh, Bobby, you ever heard this one? The secret to coaching, your team that loves you, you're going to have the middle group that's like Switzerland, and the bottom three of your roster is going to hate you. The good yeah. coach makes sure Switzerland, good coach makes sure Switzerland doesn't go to the dark side. <laughs> so 
<laughs> yep. Yep. That's, uh, that's all it I, is. You know, Guy Boucher, uh, Guy Boucher, excuse me, said that to me one time. He said, whenever I do a video session, I know that if I got 15 guys, five are ready to listen, five are ready to kick my dog, and five don't care much either way. So I'm just trying to reach the middle five. Fair enough. Yeah, it's hey, All right. It's Canadian media. That's the way it is. Every every we gotta we gotta dissect everything. Well, you're also sitting at the bottom of the league for the sixth straight year of missing the playoffs, and you're two and six in your last eight. Like, there's a lot of yeah. reasons for a lot of attention to be given to the Ottawa Senators, right? Like, it's not like things are so, all roses over here. And you, ha if there was, if you got, if the Ottawa Senators were six and two in their last eight, and there was a ten minute meeting at the whiteboard, nobody's having this conversation. Very true. So this is what kind of. This is what kind of bugs me about everyone saying, well, this is six or seven years of rebuilding. I don't think so because you go back three, four or five years, this team wasn't rebuilding. They were just sending guys out of town, trading guys, getting, getting, it, it wasn't a rebuild that was going on here. This is really right. the first year the team's <clears throat> actually <laughs> rebuilding and doing things to help the team for the future. So yeah, I, I think that analogy of this team's been doing no, they haven't. And unfortunately, when Melnick was owning this team, they weren't in a proper rebuild. So that's why it's taking longer than people have the patience for. And and it's two years from now, this team is going to be a really good team with the core they have in place. A really good team with some tweaks, uh, yeah, some some smart some smart moves and. Uh, I, I see it two years from now. It's just, unfortunately, it was a mess before. The mess is getting cleaned up. And again, we all, there's new orders coming in. Things will change. Yeah. And fair enough. Um, it, it's just, it's interesting to watch. Like, Ridley Gregg, if he makes his NHL debut on Wednesday, will be the 99th skater for the Senators since the 2018-19 season. That's a lot of names to sew on the back of jerseys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's been, it's been, yeah it's been a revolving i will door, say yeah yeah crazy. like um i looked up detroit just to give some kind of reference uh they've used 88 or 89 skaters so it's it's not a huge difference but that's a lot of bodies just to move around just to try and put a roster on the ice just for the hell of it basically because they weren't trying to do a whole lot as you said like they were just bringing in players that we were like it doesn't make a lot of sense at the moment, right? They're just trying to fill yeah. spots. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, I'm way behind. So, uh, boys, take a break. I got some reads. Uh, this show, as always, <laughs> okay. brought to you by Renfrew Pro Tape. Uh, go to RenfrewPro.com uh, and all the major retailers. Uh, Renfrew Pro Blade cloth tapes are specifically designed for today's composite hockey sticks. They use quality polyester cotton material with an advanced adhesive formulation to give you long-lasting play available in a variety of colors and patterns. RenfrewPro.com. Also follow them on Instagram as Free Tape Friday is coming up. Renfrew Pro on Instagram. Uh, BEI, Bonisher Excavating Inc. They helping to shape the Ottawa Valley if you're looking for equipment rentals, aggregate topsoil sales, uh, concrete formwork, all that stuff. Give them a shout. 613-432-1120. BonisherExcavating.com. Uh, they help to shape the Ottawa Valley. And it's Tuesday, which means... Five dollar taco night at Montana's, Bobby. Um, oh, yeah. My, yeah. My even my wife this morning goes, uh, "Are we having tacos tonight?" I'm like, "What are you talking about?" She's like, "It's five dollar taco night at Montana's." Uh, Montana's is the place to come and enjoy tasty comfort food while hanging out with family and friends, watching the game. Enjoy their limited time comfort menu with a Molson, and you could win a trip to the NHL Awards in Nashville. Uh, and finally, uh, it's time for lock of the day, brought to you by Botano. Go to botano.ca, download the all-new app. Uh, they have a free or 100% sign-up bonus, over $100 when you go and sign up at botano.ca. Botano, the game starts now. So, boys, uh, Bobby, unfortunately, you picked again another losing uh, team. Uh, you know what? I say it takes more skill for what you're doing than what Yorkie's doing. It's a hard job. I, hey, I get it wrong every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, you gave me the you gave me the option to pick florida too i just decided hey i don't know i'll go with the rangers it's like playing yeah, roulette so the rangers yeah. won six to two yeah so oh. uh now the record stand at uh bobby's with a four not, and six I'm not, 
I'm and, not going first anymore. I'm just taking whoever you want. <laughs> okay. All right. The the gold helmet goes back to Yorkie, who's now nine and one. So uh, Wednesday is the Islanders in town. <laughs> they're gonna, they're gonna uh, the Islanders, though, Sunday guys. Oh, <laughs> the Islanders are struggling. Like they uh, they lost to, um, Monday night to the Leafs at five two. I think it was. Uh, they are two seven and three in January. The last eleven mm-hmm. versus Ottawa, though they're ten and one, but they don't look very good at the moment. They I think they've lost five straight. Meanwhile, Ottawa, we all know, six and they've lost six of their last eight. But Ridley Gregg expected to perhaps provide a little momentum, a little energy boost in the lineup. So Jason York, the smartest man in hockey, uh, who are you picking? Call me Cy, Cy Young, nine and one. Holy cow, what a heater I'm on right now. Listen, uh, no you business. can't keep no giving business. yourself nicknames. Cy, <laughs> I'm nine and one for God's sake. Um, okay, so the Islanders are playing like uh, like crap right now. Coming into Ottawa, oh boy. You know what? I, one thing that Ottawa can still win hockey games with is their power play. So I think yeah. the power play is going to have a night. I think the whiteboard session with DJ, the cat, and Drew <laughs> will pay off in spades. So I'm taking the sense. Uh, All right. Nope. <laughs> All right, I like that. I, I was, I was, I was gonna. T- you know, no, I'm just gonna go against you and, and hope that you just keep running away with it. But I'm gonna take the Isles um, for no other reason than I got to make up some ground, so I can't be agreeing with you. Um, and, yep. <laughs> you know, when you're two seven and three in your I, last ten, that gives me every reason to take to jump on you. So there you go. I'll take the Islanders. There you go. You're feeling it. <laughs> yeah. We're all maybe the Islanders are in a, a world of trouble. Yeah, oh, I, they are. I, I'm th- Jason York called Ridley Gregg with a point or two in this game. So, um, yeah, I, I think the I think at it's least a senator win. He's good for an yeah. apple, at least. All right, I'll see you guys Thursday thing, morning good, when, when, I'm, when I'm back to five. Good thing the island. Good thing the Islanders <laughs> fired you fired s- Barry Trotz. Hey, eh? eh? good thing they fired Barry Trotz. That's really helped. Yeah, yeah. Didn't, didn't set you back one bit. <laughs> now, oh God. He, here's the interesting thing. Neither team is scoring a lot of goals right now, Islanders or Ottawa. The over-under is six and a half. Bobby, I will give you a bonus point. You could get to five bonus if point. you pick an Islander win and pick the over-under in this game. It's six and a half. I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take the Isles and I'm going to take under. Ooh, Under, I think we're, nice. looking a, we're looking at a three to, three to one, three to two, kind of game. That's my. That's yeah, it. I, I, neither, I, neither, neither team is burning it down on the offensive side of things, so I don't know why. I'm not. Well, we're not going to wait for an explosion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take, yeah. take the safe money. You watch it be an eight seven game. Oh, uh, I'll snap. Have you have you seen the Sens <laughs> goaltending stats lately? No, no. It's no. Yeah, it's a little well, high boys are gonna, or low, hey, depending on how you look at it. I'm going to text Josh. Tell the boys to batten down the hatches for me tonight a little bit. Let's they go. Gotta, they got to win one for Josh and win one for Bobby. That's it. Yep. Yeah, get them off the get them off the Schneid. Yeah. All right, boys. Well, that'll do it. We'll we'll check in on Thursday. It should be a uh, we're planning to go live at 3 p.m. with a special guest. Uh, we'll let you know who that is. Nice. Yorkie didn't give it away today. I appreciate that. Uh, so we'll see you on Thursday. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to watching Coming In Hot, brought to you by Botano.ca. See you, everybody. See you, guys. Enjoy the birds.